Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Aranya Bhattacharji from the School of Physical Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module Ferromagnetic Heisenberg Model. This is from the paper Solid State Physics. So students, in this module, let us see what we are going to learn and also see that you know like what we are going to actually understand so well, the first thing is understand the concept of spin hamiltonian this is very important probably you might not have heard about spin hamiltonians before but this hamiltonian that we will be discussing is just specifically meant to describe spin dynamics of course you can incorporate charge also but Yes, it's just the spin dynamics right now. Uh, how to rewrite a spin Hamiltonian in terms of Vonier functions? So, Vonier functions are a special kind of functions which are used to uh, describe tight bending approximate models. Then, third thing that you will, you will learn is to how to show that the exchange interaction is spin dependent using the concept of fermion algebra. So this exchange interaction is very specific and very special in magnetism. In fact, the exchange interaction is able, have, with the help of the exchange interaction, we are able to understand what exactly is magnetism. Learn that the exchange term is responsible for magnetic ordering. Again, very important term, the exchange term. And also learn about indirect and super exchange interactions very briefly we will do that so students symmetric and anti-symmetric spatial states of two electrons are correlated with the spin wave functions that is you know that the what exactly the sentence means is that the spatial part that is where the electron is the spatial locations is highly correlated with the spin part okay next is that Dirac and Heisenberg in 1926 showed that the Hamiltonian of the Heitler London theory which acts on the spatial degrees of freedom can be replaced by a Hamiltonian which acts only on the spin degrees of freedom the new Hamiltonian gives the same result as the old one so the crux is the matter of this the crux of the matter is this that in the old theory of the heitler london theory they were only dealing with the spatial degrees of freedom okay so that was sort of you know like a really a model which was not really able to explain the details of magnetism but then what happened that dirac and heisenberg in 1926 they replaced that spatial degrees of freedom hamiltonian with a spin part Okay, and then they were able to explain many new interesting features about magnetism. So, what is the Heisenberg model? We consider in this model a large collection of magnetic ions that are placed in a lattice. Okay, so basically, you know, we have a, 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 a lattice where we have ions sitting, but these ions are magnetic in nature. Okay, so that's the the the, uh, the 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 basic model of the Heisenberg. The Hamiltonian that describes this system is H is equal to minus summation over J i j then S i dot S j. Okay, so this uh, uh, i j that I've written just below the summation with the the, the 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 expectation the arrows hmm, within that arrows bracket it indicates a nearest neighbor interaction if you remove this it will be simply like uh, the interaction is extending to nearest neighbor next nearest neighbors and so on but to keep the model simple and at the same time realistic uh, calculations can be done analytical calculations using simply the nearest neighbor interaction note that in this the only leading term here in this case the, the nearest neighbor interaction we are ignoring the higher order terms like ring exchange process 
second neighbor interactions and many others which are of very considerably less value uh, as compared to this leading order students so what is ferromagnetism now this figure nicely actually illustrates the ferromagnetic model so in a ferromagnetic model that is a material which exhibits ferromagnetism all the spins are pointing in the same direction let's say in this case they are all pointing up so in a ferromagnetic model spins pointing up all of them if that's the basic idea about ferromagnetism the electronic states of the lattice of magnetic ions that we have considered can be described by vernier functions w as a function of capital r and small r okay so you see that vernier functions actually they are very useful in describing localized states whether you have ions or you have got atoms on a lattice neutral atoms on a lattice you can use vernier functions of course i mean like in certain approximations one can replace the vernier functions by a gaussian but here for the time being i mean we sort of prefer to be in the vernier function which is more accurate than the gaussian approximation and uh, capital r basically implies that the electrons are localized at atomic sites r in this model we have taken the spatial wave function of the electrons as fixed okay so this is also very important the spatial wave function of the electrons is fixed the interaction of the spin and space degrees of freedom can give rise to various energies but at the same time satisfying the fermi statistics okay so you can you know like play around with the spin and the space degrees of freedom but the ground reality is that it should satisfy the fermi statistics it's very important because we are dealing with electrons not bosons okay the hamiltonian for n electrons is written as the sum of the kinetic part h kinetic plus the interaction part h interaction so the kinetic part is simply p square by 2m and we have used a subscript n here to indicating that uh, whether actually the summation goes from n equal to 1 to n that is there are n electrons so for the first electron let's say it will be p 1 square by 2m the second one p 2 square by 2m and so on when we add up we get the total kinetic energy of, of the system plus u u is the interaction part now here u is the two body interaction like the coulomb interaction we will focus our attention on the interaction part and write it in the vernier function basis so h interaction in the second quantized form is written as the following h interaction now you have got a summation over many indices ij and kl these are basically the site index the four different site index we are taking ij and kl and two spins states we are taking sigma and sigma prime okay and remember that uh, if you look at this h interaction you will see that this interaction contains four operators that is ci sigma dagger cj sigma prime dagger cl sigma ck sigma so they all together and this is the interaction part now in order to study interaction hamiltonian which we have described in the previous slide the spin states ri and rk and rj and rl are same otherwise if they are not the same the matrix elements would vanish so we assume that rl is equal to ri and rk is equal to rj the reason for the choice of these groupings is that these groupings produce a non zero result at the lowest order in perturbation theory note that u is independent of the spin so doing this the interaction hamiltonian rewritten like this where you get to see that instead of i j k l indices we have simply i and j okay and we also take into account uh, the possibility of 
sort of shifting the i and j so that is why we get a two term hamiltonian not a one term now what we do is that we sort of further rewrite this hamiltonian in a slightly different way slightly in the sense that you will see the difference that is coming in is that i have introduced this operator number operator this n i sigma okay so in order to do that i have used the following relation c l prime sigma prime dagger into c l sigma prime plus c l sigma prime into c l prime sigma prime dagger is equal to delta l l prime now we discuss the concept of the exchange interaction the last term in the hamiltonian written in the previous slide where i had introduced the number operator is called the exchange term and it can be rewritten in terms of interaction between spins so we consider first the following spin algebra okay so uh, remember that we have spin up and spin down electrons in this case now so s z is equal to half of c up spin dagger c up spin minus c down spin dagger c down so that is basically s z is telling us you know the the is written as a population difference between the up and the down spins so this is half of n up minus n down s plus and s minus is written similarly so that is s plus is equal to c up dagger c down so this is implying that one is destroying the down spin electron but at the same time a correspondingly up spin electron is appearing opposite of s plus is s minus where you get to see that up spin is getting destroyed while a down spin is created the relationship between plus s plus and s minus with s x and s y is also written like this the so sx plus iota sy is equal to s plus sx minus iota sy is equal to s minus there are some other useful relations also as you can uh, see from here that n i up into n j up plus n i down into n j down can be written like this in the following way and finally you know like this expression is equivalent to half of 14 times s i z dot s j z so it would be very interesting for the students actually to uh, really solve this and find out for yourself how this is obtained now summing over the spins the exchange term in the hamiltonian is rewritten as following that h exchange can be written like this uh, so you have now you get to see that we have introduced this ni up and nj up and ni down and nj down and so just try to see if you can sort of manage to derive this exchange hamiltonian and then again you know using our knowledge about this algebra computation algebra of these spin operators you can further simplify the s uh, the hamiltonian exchange hamiltonian further and in the final form you know you will see that this s exchange is written as minus 2 into the expectation of ri rj and then you have the interaction Hamiltonian and on the right hand side you have the ket vector rj ri multiplied by 1 by 4 plus si dot sj now the other terms like you know like this term ci sigma dagger cj sigma prime dagger into cj sigma dagger sigma prime sorry and ci sigma they have got no spin dependence actually and this can be shown so explicitly i have not solved it but yes i have given some hints here which the students can try okay so now uh, finally we come to this uh, what exactly is indirect exchange and super exchange there are many ways for two magnetic ions to interact one of course we have already discussed one is the direct overlap of the wave functions okay so that is you know like you have got now two magnetic ions they are very close together 
and the wave functions are overlapping. So that is basically when you are overlapping, you, are, you can say that they are interacting. The other is the indirect interaction, you know, exchange in, in which the conduction electrons are the mediator. Okay. So you see here that you need to have a conduction electron to have this second kind, the indirect exchange. So consider that you have got two ions A and B. So the electron of the ion A flips the spin of a conduction electron. Okay. So you can imagine that you have got two ions A and B sitting like this. You have a conduction electron which is basically moving let us say from the A to B. Now when it passes through A nearby, the electron of ion A flips the spin of a conduction electron which then moves to the ion B. The conduction electron moves to the ion B and interacts with the spin of the ion B. Okay. So you get to see the effect. Okay. A to B, it is interacting with B. There is yet another way the ions A and B can interact and that is what is called as super exchange. So super exchange is similar to indirect exchange except that the mediator is a neutral atom sitting between the ions A and B. Okay. So we have the same stage that we have ions A and ion B. In the previous case, we had the mediator as the electron, but now we have got not the electron, but a neutral atom sitting between the end. Super exchange is relatively rare and ferromagnetic kinetic exchange arises from an interplay of spin and orbital degrees of freedom. So students, uh, in this module, you have studied the spin Hamiltonian with the leading order term in spin spin interaction. That means that means that only nearest neighbor interaction is able to describe well the ferromagnetism. Okay, we are basically you know neglecting the higher order interactions and also the next near, nearest neighbor interactions and like all these terms. The exchange term in the spin Hamiltonian can be written in terms of interaction between spins. The exchange term is the only term responsible for magnetic ordering. This is very very important result. The exchange term is the only term responsible for magnetic ordering and let me emphasize on this at this particular point that classically you cannot describe magnetic ordering because the exchange term is only a quantum mechanical term. Other terms in the interaction Hamiltonian is spin independent and we also studied briefly you know without going into the mathematical details about indirect and super exchange interactions. Thank you. Thank you very much.